Hello everyone and welcome to another ATG Tech Tuesday video. My name is Zach Barker. And today I will be discussing how to create groups and how they can help your workflow. So I mainly use groups when I am working in uh, a project that has a lot of repetitive elements to it. Uh, the prime example for this is a multi-level apartment building. Typically, uh, specifically talking about the bathrooms. So when you're put, placing items in a bathroom, you can do it one by one. But if you have the same type repeated over, so say these four units here all have the same bathroom layout, and these four have a different layout, but are the same among themselves, then this is a perfect scenario to use groups. I have already created a group here, and I'll show you how to create one on this other one here since they are not currently grouped. Let's go ahead and do that. So since these are three separate individual items currently, you can select all three and then come up here and click on the Create Group button, and that will group them. Uh, you then get to name it. So we're going to say this is Bathroom Type 2. Click OK. And now those items are now grouped together. Now we have two separate groups here. Bring this project browser back on to the screen here. Okay, and you can see them down here. They're down all the way at the bottom underneath groups, beneath families, and underneath models. Uh, we've got bathroom type one and bathroom type two. So say we want to then place this in these other three. We can either select this group and then copy and paste to get it in there, or you can just grab which bathroom type you want and place it. And now it comes in in this orientation. And so to get it to fit here, you would just simply mirror it here. And that actually created a copy. And move it. So then we just move it to right here. And then this one, we will. Uh, mirror it, we'll unselect the copy, mirror it this way, and then it goes there. And then we can then mirror this one and create a copy, and it's there. And now um, we'll do the same thing to this one. So uh, we'll mirror here. And then we'll actually select both of these and mirror here. Okay. And then we'll just move these into the corner. Now, the, one of the biggest advantages and time saving components of using groups is not only when you're placing it, but when changes are made. So let's say. As an engineering firm, you get directions from the architectural firm that you're working with, and they now want uh, the bathroom type one to look like bathroom type two. So, oppose if these were all separate items, you would have to come in here and change each individual bathroom all the way through the entire project, you know, times 150 however many bathroom type ones are there. But since we grouped everything prior, we can come in here, double click to activate the group. You know, we are editing this group. And so let's say they wanted the toilet up here to get more room around the toilet, and they wanted this vanity to then be in this corner. So now that we've made those changes to group one, we click finish. And as you saw, it pretty much replicated that out to these bathrooms. 
This wall must not be aligned correctly. So that was instantly done to all of these opposed to sitting here and having to go to all four bathrooms, moving this toilet, moving that vanity, moving this toilet, moving that vanity, moving this toilet, moving that vanity, and so forth. So changing it in just this one group and then clicking finish then sends out those changes to all the other instances of that group. And that is where the time saving of using groups is just incredible. Like there's no other way to replicate that in the same amount of time. Groups are extremely easy and they are just a powerful tool that is found with inside of Revit. And if you are not utilizing it today, then you should be. Thank you for joining this Tech Tuesday, and I hope this helped to quicken your workflow. Thanks.